Are you a leaf peeper? Today we're chatting all about fall in New England. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Hey Tamara, so today we're going to be chatting about New England and you were recently in a pretty famous area of that, which is the Cape or Cape Cod, right? Yes, Cape Cod is certainly, I think, I don't know, maybe some people first learned about it. Do you remember the movie Splash with I Tom do. Hanks? Yes, I know that. And yeah. Dan Daryl Hannah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was Cape Cod. But yeah, it's just as... This arm of land that sticks out, uh, you know, into the bay in the Atlantic and has some really great beaches. You know, it's it's pretty laid back. So there's no like built up huge hotel strip, you know, or anything like that. It's really like you rent a house or you stay at a, you know, like you rent a house or a condo or you stay at a family friendly resort. So we were invited, come check out the Cape Cotter resort, which is in Hyannis, which is kind of like the middle of the Cape. So you're like halfway out. Um, and we've stayed at a bunch of different places out there. I think in May, we talked about our our stay at the Waquasset and we've visited Provincetown. So we know, you know, we know it fairly well, but this was the first time we've stayed at this particular hotel. And the thing that, that they're kind of famous for is they have an indoor water park and they've just expanded that. So while you may be like, well, if you're at the beach and like, you know, why would you have an indoor water park? Like you have to remember that it is New England. So if you want to go beyond the season of uh, June through August or June through September, then it's good to have something inside. And it was really family friendly. Yeah, so family friendly. I mean, it's kind of like an an old place that they fixed up and added on to. So like different wings, like they have this whole wing, which is residences, which are one, two or three bedroom kind of apartments. And you can rent them on a weekly basis or even short term if you wanted to. But they have, you know, beautiful kitchens with granite and stainless steel and beautiful linens and steam showers and soaking tubs. So those are gorgeous. And then, you know, then some of the other rooms have been updated, but they're like in the older side. Section. And then where we stayed, they just updated some suites to be family suites. And it was it was really cool because it's it was a really big suite. You walk, it was, I think, two full bathrooms. You walk into this big, huge living area and it has like a small kitchenette and a little table. And then off to the side, there's a, a huge um, bedroom with a king bed and a really big bathroom off of that. But the girls, so I, we, I brought Hannah and she brought one of her friends. They were trying to figure out, I told them that there was a Murphy bed. And do you know what a Murphy bed is? I do know what a Murphy bed is. Yeah. Right. So it's like when it folds down. And so they were, they were looking and they're like, I don't get it. Like, how does this fold down? There's a table here. So it was really fun to watch them because basically, you know, there is like a kitchen table and we're like, do we have to fold that up first or how do we do it? But it's like, if you just pulled down on either side of the bed, then the kitchen table kind of automatically like folded into itself. And then there you have a bed. So those it was cool. Are pretty cool little designs. Yeah, it was, you know, something different and not just like the they had a pull out couch, too. But it was, you know, something fun and different and definitely gave you a lot of space. Um, so that's good for families. But they also have tons of family programming. So they do um, movies outside at night. They have a fire pit at night. They also their outdoor pool kind of has this waterfall in it, which they light up in like rainbow colors. So they call it Rainbow Falls. And they just do different kid programming, like all throughout. They'll do like a magician or crafting. Um, when we were there, we watched like an animal encounter presentation. You know, they have like a naturalist come in and show different animals. I think they had, I can't remember, was it a chinchilla? They definitely had this big like African bullfrog. Um, so that was fun, you know. And so and then the water park, which was was huge. Uh, I mean, not like huge the way like a Great Wolf Lodge or something like that, but still for a hotel, like a standalone hotel. It was really big. So like one side had a wave pool and a couple of slides. That was like the part that was already there. And then this whole new area had a couple of really tall, not not super tall, but like, you know, big, you know, for kids, like not just for little kids, body slides that a lazy river and then an area for the little kids too to, 
you know, where there's more like the splash pad and the stuff to climb on. And they have a cafe in there so you can really just hang out for the whole day. Cool. Sounds like a fun little getaway. Yeah. Oh, and then the other thing I like about them is they have a spa. It's called the Beach Plum Spa. And they they also own this other hotel in Plymouth, Massachusetts that we've stayed at before. And when we did that, Hannah and I had a mother-daughter massage, which is the first time we did that. So when she saw the Beach Plum Spa, she was like, do they have the kids services here? Because, you know, a lot of spas don't do things, you know, for kids, like yeah. maybe for teens, but not for kids. Um, and I was like, yes, but we we can't do that today. But I got I I kind of treated um, the two girls to they have chocolate manicures. So it's like they do like a cocoa scrub and they give you hot chocolate. And it, it was really cute, but they Aww. smelled so good afterwards. So <laughs> it was fun. Brings a new new meaning to the word when you want to just nibble on your kids. Because there's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm just going to like lick your arm. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds fun. I'm sure my girls would love that kind of pampering as well. Yeah. And you were just at a hotel event too, right? Yeah, not in New England, but kind of a cool little new partnership that I just went and listened to in Seattle and covered is all about Marriott hotels. And, you know, Marriott, a lot of times they're very business minded and, you know, really innovative kind of. They like to be a little trendy and they are remodeling a lot of their hotels and just today they're launching or I guess today of this recording, which will be a couple weeks before it airs, but they are launching a partnership with TED Talks. And so they've got this special curated content of TED Talks that are going to be themed each quarter. And like the first quarter is launching and it's going to be about curiosity. So when you're in your rooms and you turn on the TV, you'll have a, like a special channel selection for TED TED Talks, and you'll be able to listen kind of to these inspirational talks. And the whole idea is they want to inspire new perspectives for travelers. So it's kind of a cool partnership. And, you know, I I have to say that when I've been on business trips and stuff, sometimes I turn on the TV and you don't just necessarily want news and it's sometimes hard to figure out what to watch. So I don't know. It seems yeah, you don't fun. always know what's on because yeah. you're so used to your guide and your DVR <laughs> exactly. and all that, right? Well, you spend like 10 hours searching through the channels and yeah, you slowly exactly. turn and you're like, what channel is this? What channel is this? What channel is this? So, exactly. um, and they'll also have it where when you end up, you know, if you connect to the Wi-Fi in the public areas and you land up on their, you know, the Wi-Fi landing sign in page, they'll have the talks there too, but it's just a guest experience thing. So it's kind of neat. And they did, they have, the Seattle was the launch of these. They have a couple of salon talk series too, where we had two TED fellows give a little presentation about curiosity at Seattle and to kind of kick that off. But that's a very minute part of the uh, programming. It's actually all about the guest experience in room and in the hotel, but they are having a couple more of the salon series in, um, they're having one in London next about, Uh, entrepreneurship. And then they're having one in Dubai about innovation. And then they're having one in 2017 in Bangkok and Santiago, Chile, all about travel. So it's really interesting. It's such a unique partnership. I mean, I know I used to always love listening to TED Talk podcasts. And so, yeah, I would probably really enjoy that. Yeah, it's kind of, it's cool. I, I didn't get it when I got the invite. I kind of was a little confused. And, but the more I got you know, when I was especially in, we were at the Seattle Bellevue Marriott and it's just been remodeled to this, you know, the kind of the remodel branding that they're going for. And when you look at what I remember and know about the Marriott brand for business travelers, it it really makes sense. And I could see that when I was, you know, if I'm at a conference or if I'm traveling, it would be nice to just kind of be able to have that kind of content curated and have the central theme. I think that's interesting too, because those constant travelers, maybe it'll be nice that they're rotating it quarterly. That's nice that they're renovating too. I know that I stayed last summer at the Newport Marriott here in Rhode Island and their renovation was fabulous. And it was, you know, it's so not cookie cutter anymore. At least if that's the direction that they're going to go, it was very unique. Like everything was sailing oriented and, you know, nautical, but with like really high quality things, you know, not like cheesy, um, nautical accessories, you know? Yeah, I get it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that it's, it's neat. It's exciting. I love when hotels go through renovations and stuff, but I do think that there is a trend to being a little more 
mindful of the city you're in. And so you're not a cookie cutter brand anymore. Although you have to be able to still say, if you're staying at a Marriott, no matter where, there is this brand level, right? But Right. You need consistency, consistency. and quality, yeah. but you can still make it unique to the area. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. So yeah, it's kind of interesting news and it'll be interesting to see where they take it. They said it's a multi-year partnership and it's exclusive. So um, I don't know what multi-year means or how it'll go. (laughs) We'll see where it goes, I guess. Cool. All right. Well, good. Well, I guess we'll now start thinking about fall and, and all the leaves changing and what it's like here in New England, which is one of the nicest places, at least I think, (laughs) to be in the fall. Yeah. I have to say that it is it is kind of known for being the fall place. I, I think I have to head out and do some kind of Pacific Northwest fall leaf peeping drive so that I can I can put up a post about the comparable coast to coast. Well, if you want to come here um, <laughs> and, and compare, I was thinking of you this last weekend because we we're up at Gillette Stadium and there was, you know, the huge banners uh, of Tom Brady. I'm like, <laughs> stop talking now. <laughs> I've been cringing this whole time saying New England. I almost can't handle it. (laughs) Uh, Well, you can just, you know, rib us on the fact that he's got a suspension coming up. So, well, that's what happens to cheaters. But (laughs) okay, we will not talk football. Instead, we will talk about the beauty of New England. And that is, you know, not the football team. (laughs) Yeah, go Patriots. <laughs> no, go Chiefs or Seahawks or anyone <laughs> other than the Patriots. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's talk New England. So today we're here with Dana Freeman. Dana is an entrepreneur, a freelance journalist, and the editor behind Dana Freeman Travels. On her blog, she provides reviews of destinations and hotels around the world, specializing in Vermont, skiing, family travel, luxury travel, and adventure. So welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. I know you're always the person I think of when I think of New England because you also, don't you also have a website just for family things to do in Vermont? I do. I own um, Find and Go Seek. Dot net, which is Vermont's insider guide to kid-friendly fun in Vermont. So you could think of it like a trip advisor, but just for Vermont and family-oriented things. And then people, local parents mostly, can come on and review it and let other parents know if it's great, not so great, or what could make it better. Cool. So find and go seek for Vermont specific and then Dana Freeman travels for a little bit of everything else, right? Right. So before we get started into talking about New England, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, whereabouts do you live and your kids, background, sure. anything like that? So I'm originally from the New York, New Jersey area, um, but I moved up here to Vermont about 16 years ago, and I don't really have any intention of leaving anytime soon. It's a beautiful place to live. I'm pretty far north. I'm in Burlington which is on the lake. So Lake Champlain divides um, this part of Vermont from uh, New York State. So across from us is like the Plattsburgh area, to give you an idea. We're also about 40 miles south of the Canadian border. Um, I have two kids. I have a senior in high school and a freshman in high school, a boy and a girl. Um, My background is really started in in, in, um, marketing for computer companies. And that's what I did before my kids were born. And then I took a little time off. And when I wanted to go back to work, I couldn't really imagine going back to the computer marketing events world. And so I started finding Go Seek and things just blossomed from there. Well, we really have a lot in common because my background is in high tech marketing also and from New York, New Jersey area. So Oh, let's chat about that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, And I moved to, I did a brief stint in um, Austin, Texas, working for Dell. Um, But uh, New England was calling me home. Yeah, I interviewed at Dell once. Very different from having your own website and being your own boss, you know, being an entrepreneur. Yes, very much so. Cool. So everyone, um, actually, we have had a bunch of our listeners asking about a podcast for New England. And I kind of cover it some because I'm here in Rhode Island in southern New England. But I think when people are thinking about it, they're really thinking about the mountains. And of course, fall is a wonderful time to come. So people want to come and they want to see the foliage. So what is the best time to come? I mean, it really varies depending on 
you know, where you are in the country when the kind of the peak uh, season is. Completely agree. It, it really depends on the state. As we're farther north in New England, Vermont's foliage is best seen mid-September through mid-October. Um, historically, peak weekend for us is around Columbus Day. So if you're coming the second half of October, you've probably missed it. Um, and certainly by November, it's totally gone. We call November in Vermont stick season because there's no snow yet and there's no leaves. Yeah. Um, uh, in the southern states, you know, I grew up in New York and New Jersey, and um, I would say that the you're still safe towards the end of October. You know, peak is probably close to Halloween. Um, there's a lot of, you know, given technology these days, there's a lot of foliage or peak um, leaf apps or websites that will tell you based on the farmer's almanac or historical data exactly when if you're planning a trip and you want to know you want to make it there for the leaves. It kind of varies by like what the weather's been like in the summer too, right? Yeah, like I can tell you, like our trees are turning already here and they our trees are stressed because we didn't have a very rainy yeah, summer so at all. And so I'm not sure what that means for the colors of the leaves, but they're definitely already turning um, and some are falling off already, which is too early. Too, I know. I had that even in August just because of the drought, um, leaves were falling. I'm like, no, not yet. I know, I know. But it is a beautiful time to come. Completely. It's gorgeous. Absolutely. I say September and October are my favorite months in Vermont. Very nice. Well, I would guess with, you know, all the fo fall foliage, there must be a lot of festivals and activities that happen around New England. So do you have some favorite ones that you'd recommend? I do. As a matter of fact, they begin usually a couple of weeks into September. So like this weekend, I'll be starting um, some of our bigger fall festivals um, because they, some of them center around apple picking, which is September-ish for us. The Shelburne Farms Harvest Festival, Shelburne Farms is pretty iconic up here. Most people who travel here come to see it. It was the former home of the Webbs uh, vacation home, and now it's a nonprofit, and it's got a farm barn and an inn and just a beautiful piece of property. And every September, I think maybe for 35 years running, they've had a fall harvest festival, um, which is Lovely. One of my favorite. The Northeast Kingdom has some, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Northeast Kingdom. That's a term here for the northeast area of Vermont, close um, up towards the New Hampshire border and the Canadian border. And they do several festivals. Um, one's called the Colors of the Kingdom, obviously dedicated to the beauty of the foliage at this time of year. And then they have one a little bit later in the season that um, spreads over six towns so like, you know, Monday is Cabot, Tuesday is um, Pulteney, you know, and so on. Um, and that's kind of a neat thing if you've got a whole week to be in Vermont during foliage season and get to see how smaller towns celebrate. Yeah, I remember even hearing um, from, you know, maybe one way, a good way to do that is to look at some of the trails that uh, are offered. I remember working with Vermont Tourism and they have like a don't they have like a cheese tasting trail or like they have different kind of agricultural or agritourism um, trails that you can follow. That would probably be a nice way to wind your way through some of those smaller towns. For sure. Vermont tourism has um, great, uh, they've got, they've got trail maps and guides. Um, so you could, you could do that. And then they've got some festivals on there exactly that follow a trail um, based on food or scenery, or et cetera. One of my other favorite festivals is uh, coming up towards the end of October. I haven't been to it yet, but I'm looking, I follow it every year online. It's called the Keene Pumpkin Festival in New Hampshire. Um, and they, I'm dying to go because they just light up hundreds and hundreds of, of pumpkins in the evening. This year I, I looked online and it's October 22nd, um, which would be past my foliage season. So I'm hoping maybe to go down there for that. I actually that sounds wrote funny. about that. I, I remember... You did. Listed. Yeah, I just I wasn't there, but I did a roundup of kind of some of the best fall festivals and Halloween attractions around. And that one was on my list. Yeah, we have something it, it, similar down in Rhode Island and Providence. We have the um, jack-o'-lantern spectacular that they do through the zoo. So the Roger Williams Zoo just south of Providence. So you go at night and just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pumpkins are jack-o'-lanterns really are lit all throughout the trails going through the zoo. So it's a really fun way to do it. It's just so crowded sometimes, but it's really amazing some of the carvings that people can do. Right. We have smaller, you know, it's funny in Vermont, we don't have many 
pumpkin oriented uh, festivals. The towns sometimes do that where you can um, bring a pumpkin or get one there and carve it one day. And then the next night, the whole park or whatever is lit up. But this Keen Pumpkin Festival um, seems like it's a bigger deal. So I'm going to ask a quick question as a Kansan who's living on the West Coast now. What areas make up New England? Typically, when people say New England, what areas would that be? Well, starting from the top down, I would say it's Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, um, New York, although people don't think of like New York City, but New York runs all the way up to the border. So uh, certainly upstate New York and Massachusetts, Connecticut. Do you consider Rhode Island part of New England? I, I do. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like southern New England. So southern New England is more Connecticut, Rhode Island, some in Massachusetts, and then Really, I think when people think of New England, it's generally Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Right. Cool. So it's all part anything, of the region, but the the really the mountains and everything that's really Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Right. And I think anything below that would be like Mid Atlantic. I mean, right. New Jersey down to Washington would be considered Mid Atlantic. Right. So if families wanted to mix in some sightseeing and attractions with, you know, a fall festival or viewing some of the beautiful leaves, what what are some of your favorite suggestions for them? I think that you should take advantage of what goes on at ski resorts during the off season. For instance, a gondola ride. Um, If you don't want to hike at all, you could take the gondola up and down. It's a scenic ride and um, you get to see beautiful foliage from above. I think... um, if you're up for it, a treetops or an adventures course or the zip lines. Also, I've actually done zip lines all every single season, including the winter. And it's really just a great way to see from the treetop angle, you know, looking down all the beautiful colors and foliage. I can imagine. I grew up going to Vermont. My My grandmother lived there. My aunts and uncles lived there. And we hardly ever would go in the fall. So when we have, it's like such a treat. But I went a few years ago for a cousin's wedding over Columbus Day weekend, which is just peak. And it was such a beautiful weekend. And at the time, we did the Alpine slide, which was at um, Pico, which I guess is no longer there. But I think there are are still some mountains in Vermont, too, that have Alpine slides because that's a, a fun family way to do it, too. Yeah, they call them now, like like Stowe used to have one, they don't anymore, but um, they, they have mountain coasters. So yeah, it's, it's like, like on a track it's, versus the yeah. concrete thing, right? Yeah, so like uh, Okimo has that. Um, so you're on an alpine slide cart, if you will, you know, same thing that would have been on the concrete, but it's on a roller coaster track. Um, and you control the speed, you know, with the lever or joystick, so you can go as fast or as slow as you want to. Those are fantastic. Yeah, I remember even as a kid just loving those. They're just, uh, especially for me, because I am a bit of a chicken when it comes to rides, I love that you can control the speed. Like even if I end up going fast all the way, just knowing that I can slow down, that was the best. That's the same thing with a zip line, I think. Um, I did Stowe's new one uh, last summer. And I mean, you can go up to 60 miles an hour or whatever it is, as fast as, as, fast as you want. But you control the speed, so you can just kind of glide down the mountain at a mile an hour. Because um, I'm not an adrenaline junkie at all. <laughs> kind of a scaredy cat as well. <laughs> so if you are going to do some hiking or even some mountain biking... Would that also be kind of more in the ski resorts or do you have some other trails that you would recommend? I I have a couple. I mean, certainly for mountain biking, doing it on a ski resort trail is great because they're um, they're already cleaned out and and, um, there's only going to be mountain bikers on those trails. Um, But if you're going to hike... I would suggest Stowe Pinnacle in the fall. And the, the summit is just amazing. It gives you views of Mount Mansfield, the Waterbury Reservoir, the Worcester Range. Um, you're just, you feel like you're standing on the top of the valley and you can see all the trees and all their glory. It's really great. It's not a terribly hard hike, but it's not easy either. So if you've got younger kids that you're traveling with, another one that would be great is Mount Philo, which is in Charlotte. And that's only about 15 minutes from Burlington. And um, the Mount Philo State Park is Vermont's oldest state park. And it has amazing views of the Adirondack Mountains, as well as the Champlain Valley area. But the nice thing is there's a road that goes to the top. So you can hike the path. But for for kids or if you're going to push a stroller up, there's there's a road to push it up. 
Yeah, that's convenient. It, and it's like when you're looking at uh, hiking, you always think, oh, well, I can walk a mile in, I don't know, like 15 minutes. But then you realize, yeah, when you're going uphill and over routes and, you know, all of the things that are on your typical path, you're definitely not going at the same speed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, and you're certainly not going at the same speed with, you know, a stroller or a backpack with a kid in it yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> exactly. So I think people also like to just just do scenic drives, right? I mean, there's some famous ones. There's, I never know how to pronounce it. What's the one in New Hampshire? Like the Cacamungus? Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, I don't know. Oh. That, sound, that there, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's one in Southern New Hampshire that kind of goes, you know, across the White Mountains from one side to the other. Do you have any um, scenic drives that you really would recommend at this time of year? Vermont's known for Route 100. Um, it's uh, not off the beaten path, but it's not a highway. So it goes through small quintessential Vermont type towns. Um, and then you're, you're on the open road where you're just driving past farmer's fields or whatnot. So it's great if you want to stop along the way. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, Erica Housekeeper, she owns happyvermont.com. She has nine historic scenic drives um, that are an alternative to Route 100 on her website um, with photos and exactly the route. Um, and they're great. I would suggest taking a look there. Okay. And we'll take a look and a link to that in our show notes. And I think you can do, I don't know the name of it, but you know, Vermont is known for its covered bridges and we certainly have, we have a marathon that runs the covered bridges. Um, I don't necessarily know that you have to run it, but you can certainly follow that trail as well. If you're interested in that type of thing. I think that's, that's pretty much what my family vacations were growing up. We didn't, we couldn't afford to do anything but go visit family. So we would go and search for covered bridges and um, (laughs) climb through some rivers. It was a lot of, you know, it was good, good family fun. Yeah, things haven't changed too much. I mean, here, it's getting a little, you know, um, on the colder side, eventually to be in the rivers, but we have tons of swimming holes. And I guess probably still into September, you can jump in in the river. Sounds very cool. What about some favorite family-friendly hotels that are in the area that you'd recommend if people are planning to head out there? If you're going to go to Maine and you're going to be in the Portland area, I would highly recommend the Inn by the Sea. It's a smaller property um, on Cape Elizabeth, but it's just 15 minutes south of Portland, so you can easily go back and forth, um, but super family-friendly. They have a lot of kids' programs, nature programs. got a heated pool, which I would assume is still going through September and they're on the ocean. Um, Across the way from us in Lake Placid, uh, we love the Mirror Lake Inn and Resort or Inn and Spa. Um, It's right on Mirror Lake and um, you can walk from there into town and there's a ton to do. Uh, In Massachusetts, I'd say out on the Cape, um, the Waquasset. I just stayed there in uh, May. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And they just love kids. I mean, I don't know if they do it still in the fall, but the whole ice cream truck guy with the old fashioned outfit, you know, I, that was fabulous. Yeah. We were there like in May, but, and they told me about that. It's, it sounded like the adults beat a path to it as much as the kids. I I think my husband elbowed out my daughter (laughs) to get to the ice cream. (laughs) Um, You know, and I know that they, they've got an outdoor fire pit and they do movie nights and all sorts of stuff. That's a lovely place to stay with kids in, in Massachusetts. Um, and here in Vermont, gosh, I have so many favorites. Um, in southern Vermont, if you wanted to explore the Woodstock Queechee area, I'd say the Woodstock Inn and Resort. Um, it's really nice and right in town. You can walk to everything. And then up here in the north, if you wanted to stay in Burlington um, downtown, I'd say the Hotel Vermont. It's a really unique property, beautiful boutique hotel, um, completely kid friendly, but everything in the hotel is from Vermont and uh, natural resources, you know, the wood, the slate, the blankets, everything is Vermont made. That's great. I would, um, I love the Woodstock area. It was always one of my favorites. Um, I think I would also throw in, well, I mean, so a lot of the ski resorts have some, some great family friendly hotels too, like Smuggler's Notch. I mean, no, whatever the season there, they're, right. um, they really cater to families and down in New Hampshire, uh, you know, there are quite a few, but the Red Jacket resorts definitely cater to families. They also have a big indoor water park right in North Conway. And it's kind of one of those old fashioned family resorts. Right. Oh, and in New Hampshire too, the Mount Washington. Yeah. I, I, um, I think it might be an Omni or. Um, yeah, I think it is. Right. They've got there, they've got the cog train that goes up the mountain. That'd be fantastic in the fall. 
Yeah, and let me tell you, after driving that, I that if I ever go to the top of Mount Washington again, it's going to be on the cog train and not me driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd probably be what I would do as well. So that's good. So I know a lot of people do head up there, though. For we used, I used to work at AAA when I was in college, and we called them the Leaf Peepers. Um, yeah. So lots of road trips. It can get a little crowded. You know, any tips for avoiding the crowds, getting off the beaten path? I guess just some of the trails that you've mentioned? Sure. I think if you can travel, certainly because there's only, let, let's call it five to six peak weekends or weekend foliage times with falls, fairs and festivals going on. If you can a- avoid those weekends and come during the weekday, I mean, even if you came on Thursday and Friday and left on Saturday or vice versa, came on Sunday and stayed on Monday and Tuesday, I think that you'll avoid a lot of that leaf paper and um, drivers that you're talking about, the ones that have their hands on their wheel and their eyes out the window um, and their their cameras out the window at the same time. Uh, The other thing is I would choose uh, the lesser known areas of the state that you're visiting. So I mentioned before the Northeast Kingdom. I mean, there's, that's like where J peak and um, Burke ski resorts are is up in the Northeast Kingdom, but you're not going to find the crowds there and you could go at any time. Or um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but Vermont has islands. We have the Lake Champlain Islands. They're very flat and they're all connected um, via roads as well as uh, there's a bike path that you can take out there with a bike ferry. And it's a great place to bike in the fall um, and you will avoid the crowds. That sounds really nice. You know, as a kid, I used to like to take the ferry on Lake Champlain because I was obsessed with finding um, what champ, like the uh, the Loch Ness Monster <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of Vermont, right? Yes, Champ. He's the, he is. He's the Loch Ness Monster of Lake Champlain. Yeah. I if, was, you go to Echo, if you go to Echo while you're here, that's our, that's our like Lake Champlain um, Aquarium and Science Center, which is right downtown in Burlington. You can learn all about Champ. Yeah. And that's supposed to be really good, right? It is. It's fabulous. Dana, we just kind of ask if a family is going to take a trip out there, what do you or where do you recommend is the best place for them to take a family photo to remember the trip? If it's fall, obviously you're going to want some fall foliage in the background. So I would say if you hiked, do it from the top of a mountain um, where you can get all that fall foliage in. In Vermont, I mean, in uh, Burlington at the waterfront, we have a, a scenic waterfront that goes all along the front of the town. And you can get Lake Champlain and then the Adirondack Mountains in the background. Um, and there's certainly lots of places to pose for a picture There, if you go on a hayride or pumpkin picking or to an apple orchard, goodness, the the possibilities are endless. One of my favorite orchards here in Vermont is Shelburne Orchards, and they have the ultimate trifecta. They've got the apple orchards, they've got the cider, the cider donuts, and then their orchard overlooks the lake. So you can't beat that for a family photo. I think my favorite thing about fall are cider donuts. Oh, yes, they're a downfall. <laughs> our, just our, go hiking afterwards. There you go. I just got to notice that our yeah. local apple orchard is going to be ready to pick this weekend. And they're so popular now that because they have honey crisp and they're really popular and people come out in droves. Yeah. yeah. And they normally are only open for like one weekend for picking. It's crazy. That's how uh, oh, really? one of the farms by us is. Actually, this year, I think they lost a lot of their crop and they're not going to have any public picking. But yeah, it's like one weekend. And if you don't get there, then yeah, you're out. You're out of luck. Oh, no. Ours lasts, um, I can't speak to any other state but Vermont, but ours lasts pretty much the whole month of September. It's open for picking. As a matter of fact, Vermont Tourism runs a group of apples to iPods. So they partner up with 20 plus orchards and they've hidden a wooden apple trees in you know for PYO for pick your own and if you find it you win an iPod that's so cute and all all of these things that I'm mentioning certainly about Vermont you can find on the findandgoseek.net website okay so last question that we ask all of our guests and that is what do you like to wear when you travel I have to say my favorite thing and that I would never travel without is a good pair of shoes um, because the whole point for me of traveling is it's adventure and to see things and get around. And my favorite brand is Clark's. I have um, a pair of sneaker-like slide-ons. They look like like little like ballet flats, but they're sneakers and they're Clark's, so they're comfy. And then I have a pair of like walking sandals that I could wear with a dress or wear with jeans. And 
uh, I could walk across a room in them. That's what I like to say. They're yeah. incredibly comfortable. My other thing that I always pack is a pair of darn tough socks. They last forever and they're cool in the hot days and they're warm, you know, when you need it to be warm. Are they made in Vermont? They are made in Vermont. If you're here in November, which is a little bit past, obviously, fall foliage season, um, Darn Tuff does a sock sale um, at the Cabot Mill, at the Hosiery Mill, and people line up for days on end to get discounted socks. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. That's like the joke my husband and I make about Black Friday toothpaste deals. We're like, hurry, we're not going to target <laughs> toothpaste is a dollar, you know, just kind of that savings versus the expense thing. Right, the waiting on the line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Well, so anything else to add about say. New England that you haven't discussed yet? The only other thing I'd say is pretty much no matter where you are in New England, I think it's the best time to eat um, because, you know, farm to table is quite a movement and it really holds true up here. The harvest is in. So you can find the best, freshest, you know, vegetables on your table um, in the, any local restaurant. And for us, I know that the farmer's markets go all the way till October. So if you want to pick some up and cook your own, or if you want to eat in the local restaurants, they're all using local produce. And you have a lot of good resources on your site. I think I've used them um, for finding some good local restaurants. Yes. I will say if you are in Stowe, definitely go to the bench. Uh, it's comfort food, but really, really good. And they have craft beer. I think it was one of the places where you can find Hetty Topper, which was like hard to find, right? And yes. um, it was fabulous. We had such good poutine there. And plus, I think I loved that they had a great play, you know, like a play mix playlist. They played a lot of Grateful Dead. I liked that. Oh, nice. Jay, Jay Peak does um, in August, an August West Fest, and it's all based on Grateful Dead music. Mm. So next time. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, cool. thanks well, so much, thanks. Dana. <laughs> You're welcome. It was so nice chatting with both of you. And where can our listeners find more information about you or your travels? Uh, well, if you want to follow my travels, um, I'm always posting pictures from the latest places I've been on my Instagram, and my username is Dana H. Freeman. Um, and then keep up on my blog, which is DanaFreemanTravels.com. And if you're looking for just Vermont information, things to do with your kids while you're here, find and go seek.net. Great. And we will link to those in our show notes. And thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. And we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, take care. We're back, you guys, with our tip of the week. And this one is kind of one that hopefully has a couple points, but it's about AAA. And I know Tamara mentioned that she used to work for them, but AAA memberships aren't too expensive, but they have some good perks that come along with it. And some of those for travel are travel discounts. And you can sometimes get discounts on hotels or car rentals or things like that with your AAA card. But another perk that has kind of gone by the wayside is that AAA offers kind of a free road trip planning route map service for you. And so if you were going to head to New England and you wanted to take like a leaf peeping drive, you could go to your local AAA office and they would help you with a route map that would show you kind of your drive and stops along the way. And it's just kind of a neat little service that they do. And I was thinking with family travel, you know, a lot of us are using GPS or our phones or we already know how we're going, but perhaps you'd want to go get one for your kids so they could have a map of the route and follow along and maybe check stuff off and you know, it just might be kind of a fun little addition to your road trip. Yep. I used to make those. That was like my summer job. My last couple of years in college, I would make like a hundred of them a day. <laughs> I think that's really where I got interested in a lot of different destinations too, because people would call and request different things. And I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always been, good. It's a neat service. I never have used it personally, but I remember it um, my grandparents did it once for something. And I remember going with my grandma to pick it up. And then I remember my mom doing one one time and having the map at home and stuff. And I can't remember all the details on it, but I thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is like, even if you don't want that 
what used to be called a triptych. I don't even know if that's the current um, term for it, but they will also just give you maps. So I always like when I'm planning my trip, I like to look at a map and, you know, try to figure out because like Google Maps is great for point to point. But like if you just want to get a visual of like, you know, what the right order of things is like, I enjoy looking at a map. I'm just a map person. So they also give you free maps and free um, tour books. So if you want to you know, just get a sense of what there is to see and do in the area. So those, you know, great, great services that probably are not fully utilized and even not just um, hotels and car rentals, but even if you go to certain attractions, um, ask if they have a AAA discount. A lot of times they did. We went to a museum, oh, the one out in Bozeman recently. And right after we paid, the person behind us was like, do you have a AAA discount? And they're like, yeah, we do. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) we could have gotten that too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, it's really um, good. I know. Yeah, uh, like always ask. Yeah, and shopping malls, sometimes even retail. We have our outlet malls up here in Seattle. You get a free oh, yeah. a coupon book. Yeah, it's normally like $5 for the coupon book, but with AAA membership, you get it for free. And I know Payless Shoe Source, it's back to school kind of maybe if you need shoes. Um, they give a discount. It used to be off your whole purchase, but now I think it's $40 or more. Um, so every once in a while, you can ask even at retail stores too. So those are great tips. And uh, this week, we also want to give some shout outs to um, a few of you have gone to our Facebook page. We put a a call out there for people to give us some ideas on what you would want us to cover. And uh, well, Angela, you had asked for an episode on New England. So here you go. (laughs) And uh, we'll probably also look to do some of the other things you suggested, like Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia. Elizabeth was looking for some tips on the first time you travel with kids and flying with infants. So we're working on scheduling those as well. And then Amy was looking to hear about the Grand Canyon and hot air ballooning over Napa Valley. That sounds so fun. Um, I definitely have stuff about Napa and Sonoma, but nothing about hot air ballooning. So we're going to take all of that into consideration. And thank you so much for all the comments and all the feedback. Like you really, whenever we read something that's like, you know, we listen to every episode, it just, it makes me so happy. It gives me a big smile and uh, we really appreciate the feedback. Yes, we do. So thanks a lot for joining us this week. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful start to your fall and that you'll join us next week as we have another great episode of Vacation Mavens. Talk to you next week.